What is going on, guys? I am Jada Black. Shout out to everybody that is tuning in. I want to talk about Steven Jackson, a former NBA player who y'all know I made a video about recently. You know, he went viral because he spoke about how men should avoid uh, chasing after women and having kids by them and what to avoid and basically sharing his mistakes. Now, he basically did a part two to that. But this went in depth about a relationship that he had with a woman that he almost married. He almost married this particular woman who is the mother of his kids years ago. Okay. I think her name is Melissa. All right. And you know he spoke about her or Amani. Amani uh, Showalter. Now, he made this video and he spoke about some of the things and of course I took notes because we're breaking this all the way down um, and there are some things that he spoke about I'm, I'm gonna see about putting a clip at the beginning okay so hopefully you like this video and um, I definitely wrote down the things that he has said because he was very detailed now when it got to the wedding part it got kind of hazy at times but I don't think he was lying. Now, he said that the Spurs didn't want to resign him because of her, the things that she wore, how she conducted herself. The other wives on the team did not really like her. Now, she ended up putting up a bunch of posts, and I think she's still posting because this initial video was on the 3rd of April. It's the 22nd, and she still has been posting about that first vid that video that I'm responding to now. Now, she's older now. She has been, you know, um, mother. Um, I think that back then, both of them were a bit immature. I think Steven could tell you that, and I think she was as well, you know. Of course, hindsight, you're going to say that you weren't what, you know, he was saying you was, but I believe you were. You know, because I've been around women who were very immature when they're in their late teens, early 20s. Then, you know, once after raising a kid or two, when they get a little older, they uh, are conducting themselves differently. They, they weren't who they were before. OK. He also said that once he left the uh, San Antonio, I believe he went to Atlanta. He said the relationship started to become very toxic. OK. Now, despite that, once he signed his contract with Indiana, Indiana, he still ended up proposing to her. You know, I guess she was on her best behavior now because she knew he may got that big money. OK. And he also said something that was very interesting. He said that, you know, no woman was in the gym with him working on his jump shot. So therefore, they're not going to control him. And I totally agree. Um, it just. It's amazing to me how women who did not help these guys whatsoever in their careers want half of everything that they own. They want not only a spousal support check, they want monthly spousal support. I've never understood that, you know. Not only that, they want child support. They want the house. They want the car, you know. I've even seen some celebrity divorces where they want they want a piece of of your businesses. You know, they want a piece of the income you're getting from certain businesses. You know, just lazy. Don't want to go make their own money, but then they want to hop on their social media and they want to act like they're such a businesswoman. Um you're spending his money. That's why you a businesswoman. You, you, your business is spending your ex's money. Uh, he also said that they both agreed on a prenup before the wedding. Okay. I, I believe that. Now, she posted to her Instagram paperwork about how she didn't receive or sign anything until, uh, was it two weeks or a week before? The wedding but still you had enough time to sign a prenup uh the paperwork she was showing basically she had all these stipulations 
you had all those stipulations, but you still refused to sign the prenup, you know, because you did not want to sign a prenup. And I believe him when he said you didn't want to, because I believe he would have married her because why, why would he not marry her? Okay. Why would he not marry her? Um, if that she obviously was okay with signing the prenup. She trying to make it seem like she didn't get the paperwork until right before the wedding. Okay, you got the paperwork right before the wedding. Why didn't you sign it? Uh, you didn't want to sign it. They even, um, she even wanted her own, her own pastor. That she, He says she didn't even know the pastor uh, to officiate the wedding. And he capitulated on that. Also, um, he said he spent four hundred thousand dollars on this wedding. I when I heard that, I was like, "Oh God!" This, you know, once again, if this man was looking for any reason not to marry her, why would he spend four hundred grand on this wedding in his hometown, in front of his friends and family, in front of you know uh, friends in in um, in the NBA? I believe if she would have signed that prenup, he would have married her, you know, but she didn't want to, because if you look at the stuff that Amani is putting on her Instagram, y'all got to understand this video from, uh, from Steven Jackson was in early April, right? Do y'all know that she has still been posting stuff up until as of a day or two ago? But they, but I've seen some of the commenters in her comment section say that, you know, well, he is a narcissist. Uh, he's a narcissist, but he only posted one video. Okay. He posted one video. She is posting paperwork. She's posting posts about how the, the women in San Antonio did like her. I mean, she's displaying the narcissistic behavior. You know, if you look at her, she looks like a woman who would be somebody's wife, right? Well, up until now, I don't think anyone has married her. I could be wrong. Maybe y'all have more information in her personal life than me. But to me, she just seems like a single mom who's living off her ex's money. Uh, on her Instagram, she still has pictures of him. Now, she's not a bad looking woman at all. You know? You know, she's cute to me. You know, nice body but still single and she has pictures of him and you know what the saddest part about all of this she literally put up posts trying to make him out to be she put up screenshots of his text messages to try to make him look like a bad father even though she has pictures of him with his kids just recently as what december or january of this year but he's the narcissist but you're mudslinging and you're trying to appeal to the females out here who are dealing with issues with their baby's fathers that they're probably making worse. Because just like I said in my most recent live stream, you have a lot of women out here who have no accountability whatsoever. Uh, they don't think they do anything wrong. They think everything is everybody else's fault. They don't take accountability for anything that they say and do. Do I think that Steven Jackson is, you know, the the most honest and real person ever? No, I think Steven Jackson has made mistakes. But the one thing that Steven Jackson has done that even his ex has not done is take accountability for their behavior in a relationship. And he also said this. He said that right before he called off the wedding, OK, he was crying. Because she had, because he had made his mind up that he was not going to marry her until she signed the prenup. And time went and time went and just got to the point to where he said she's not going to sign it. And he said he literally cried. And, and the reason why I will say in this instance, he's not lying about these next sequence of events. He said that Mike Bibby's mother wiped the snot from his nose. OK, that's not a detail that you make up. That's not something you lie about. He said he 
really appreciate how she was just such a mother to him in that moment. Okay. He goes out and he sees her and she's crying and she's like, yes, I'll sign it. I'll sign the prenup. And he says that from, from the info and from the advice he got, never allow a woman to sign a prenup under distress because what's going to happen is that she is going to use that in court against you. So that was very smart of him to do that. Once again, do y'all think he's lying about that? Okay. So he ended up calling off the wedding. Okay. He called off the wedding and because he called off the wedding, he said, you know what? Uh, well, he said that, uh, one of his friends played the, uh, gold digger song, <laughs> but, um, he admitted something I thought was hilarious in that moment. I mean, it, it is kind of bad because, you know, he, he said he spent all that money. He wanted to get married, but he says, you know what? I spent 400 grand on this wedding. I need to get some get back. So he said that when he was leaving, one of her friends, you know, wanted to kick it with him and he ended up kicking it with her and, you know, taking her down, so to speak. <laughs> now, that was her friend. Probably somebody that she, because he's probably never told this story publicly. Probably a chick that she's friends with to, to this day. Steven Jackson probably smashed her. <laughs> and, um, yeah, the whole situation to me is, is sad, man. And the one moral to the story of Steven Jackson is that he says that, you know what? One woman is enough. You should want to just deal with one woman because it saves you money and it saves you stress, you know? And that's definitely true, you know? Um, balancing different women, getting them pregnant, because there's still dudes that are going to make these mistakes. There are guys out here who are still going to go and have unprotected relations with women and they're going to get themselves completely caught up. Then get themselves caught up because they have the mindset of a simp. You know, they have a mindset of, I want to. I want to brag about all these different women I got. Okay, but when you start getting those women pregnant and those women become a problem in your life, what are you going to do then? Who are you going to blame then? Now, Steven Jackson is not innocent in this situation, okay, at all. But he's taken accountability. He's done more than his ex has. At least take accountability for the fact that you could have signed that prenup and didn't. It don't matter if the prenup got there an hour before the wedding. When you didn't sign it to him, it showed him that you are just a gold digger. Um, you're just with him because of what he has. You basically proved him right. You know, I don't understand why these so-called educated, sophisticated women have such an issue signing prenups. You are supposed to be educated and successful. You're supposed to be about your business as a businesswoman. Why is it so difficult for you to sign a prenup? Why do you want his money so bad? Because trust and believe if it was a woman who was making millions and she was dating a guy who was working a regular job, she would want him to sign a prenup, I'm sure. And she would be advised, okay, to make sure that he signed that prenup. But see, that's the thing that we have in our society is double standards. But at least in this situation, Steven Jackson is being accountable for his role. Once more women be accountable, it will be a whole lot easier for them to find somebody that they're looking for. It'd be so much easier for them to be able to move on and find happiness because looking at the behavior of Steven Jackson's ass, again, I'm not saying that she can't respond, but I mean, you've been responding all month. It just shows me that she knows that she is probably the one who messed that situation up. 